All right, welcome to the Sci-Fi Express Lane. Jeff Carroll here, sci-fi writer, spokesperson, whatever you want to call it, black sci-fi, Afrofuturist, you name it. I am, I'm open to it. Sci-Fi Express Lane is where I express myself. Uh, so I want to um, get into, um, well, first, like, subscribe, share, and of course, after you listen, make a comment. All right, so I was in a comic book store yesterday, and... Um, I was buying my uh, friend's comic book, John Jennings, who wrote uh, the latest, uh, I think it's six book series of uh, uh, Silver Surfer, in which he introduces a new black superhero. And I'm not, I haven't read it yet, so I don't even know the character's name. Anyway, the comic book store uh, erupted in conversation when I said why I was excited. The black gentleman behind the counter he also was excited, right? Um, there was another gentleman, a white gentleman, and I even think we had either another black guy at the store or he was Latino, and I didn't ask him. Um, but anyway, the white guy was like, man, I love, you know, uh, Icon. He's my favorite one, you know? And I, I fell back, you know, I said, you know, I don't dislike Icon. I love what they did at Milestone, you know, um, but I want us to do more, you know? And then I got into it. And I said, you know, I and, and actually before I said what I had to say, the black gentleman who is like a comic book anthology <laughs> said, well, Icon's not really black, you know, he's just a group of people that assimilate to planets when they arrive at them. And he just happened to come to Earth and assume the... Um, assume the uh, uh, appearance of a black person. And then I said, wow, that's, you know, of course I knew that, but um, he beat me to the, you know, the nerd out, right? And then I said, well, it's very much like my man in um, Deep Space Nine, and I forget his name. I remembered it when I started the video and I forgot it. And y'all know I'm driving, so I can't even uh, look at notes and stuff like that, so I don't even take them. Um, but the gentleman in, in Deep Space Nine, the captain, you know, he's not a black person either. He's, I don't even think he's half black. I think he's celestial um, altogether. But if anything, he's like uh, Star-Lord. And, you know, Star-Lord is white, you know, born to a white mother. So that's fine. You know, you give them the half black, you know, um, uh, status, but what you don't get in exchange is the coveted black planet. You know, if you're going to give us Icon, give us, you know, a black Krypton. You know what I'm saying? If Icon is black Superman, let's not just go halfy duzzies. You know what I'm saying? Let's go all the way. And that seems like what the big problem is. You know, my man, Mace Windu, his planet has never been explored. He supposedly comes from a stereotypic jungle planet. If you read the book Shatterpoint in Star Wars, well, as many planets as they have, ain't but a bunch of white planets. And this is what the white guy in the comic book store said. He said, they're all white planets. You know, the Wookiees got their own daggone planet. You know, the Ewoks got a planet. But where's Mace Windu's planet? You know, um, sure, humans, variations, you know, but we, we've seen that, you know, he's not even diversified as much as Earth is with their human, human species, right? Um, we know Star Wars has Asians, Latinos, you know, black people, indigenous Americans, but, you know, where do they come from? You know, how are they, you know, of course, we don't want to get into racism, but we do want to get into racial awareness, and so it becomes the big question. Where do black people come from in space and why we don't have a black planet? And so for me, um, that was why I created my story, A Planet of Kibalon, uh, because I wanted to have uh, a black planet. Now, we'll get back into the Planet of Kibalon because I'm about to do the third book, Kickstarter, and I'm gonna be ramping it up here on my um, blog. But let's go back to this you know, black planet thing. Yeah, it's a conspiracy theory, right? Um, that we don't have a black planet 
but I don't really have a conspiracy. I don't believe it's a conspiracy. I think it's just um, probably fear, right? So um, maybe there's an awareness that a black planet would touch some of uh, Ron DeSantis feared nerves and you know white fragility would be up in arms oh my god it's a planet of black people what if they invade earth oh my god you know so um maybe that is you know the biggest uh, uh clue to why we don't see black planets um one of the first anthologies i regret not really regret i feel bad because i tried you know, um, well, I don't even know if I tried. I don't, yeah, I did try, but I don't know if I got it um, together in time. I think what happened was um, the anthology was Invitation, and I didn't get invited. So I had to do more on my um, Stomp the Room game. Um, and uh, when Milton Davis did the uh, Dark Universe anthology, I, I think I didn't want to do it because I didn't want it to be. Uh, influence. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have the influence of uh, what do you call it? Um, my story, Welcome to Boss Lady's Planet, which has you know their universe is every continent on Earth has terraformed a planet in this solar system. So you don't not only have a black planet, you have an Africa planet, you have an India planet, you have a Chinese planet. So. You know, everybody got more space, okay? It's what Thanos should have done. Should have expanded the habitable planets, right? So, um, that's where I, I, I was, right? Um, that story, Dark Universe, is beautiful. It's got a bunch of stories, but where is the black planet? Very much like my Welcome to Boss Ladies planet. These are terraforms. So you got a rich billionaire, trillionaire, zillionaire on Earth, a black guy who buys a planet for black people and black people uh, cultivate it in this universe. His story takes place in, uh, I think it's 500 years after this planet has been terraformed. So, you know, you got this, right? Well, it's like 40 acres in the mule. It's, it's 40 planets in the mule, who knows? Do they have to give us planets if we're terraforming? Planets are, you know, free for us to go out there and just negotiate. So it's not white people. They ain't giving it to us. So he just found it and populated it. So um, very much like we did in Chicago and, and various other places, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, a lot of these places we created for ourselves. Anyway, that doesn't feel the same as a Krypton, right? Krypton, you know, Star Wars, even these uh, Orville, and even these uh, Star Trek. Star Trek gave us a black planet, but it was some old, uh, what do you call it, bootleg, colonized, residual African thing. I don't even know what to call it. It was really weird. You know, I think Uhura got to fight or something like that. They wanted to keep a horror. I have no idea. I can't remember, but I do know I reference it sometimes and refresh my memory on it. Um, but yeah, so that's what Star Trek gave us. And it still never felt like um, a, a what a black planet potential could be. So in the midst of us talking all this nonsense in the, in the comic book store, I blurted out, you know, one of these little Jeff Carroll statements that I I do every once in a while. If you watch the panel, the monster panel, you know I say some wild stuff. It ain't cursing. It's just the elephant in the room, you know. So um, I, 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 I blurted out something about, you know, why are they scared of a black planet? You know, why not just give us that? And, you know, I coupled it with just read black creators. Black creators will give us black planets and they will give us black planets with power. Why did I say that and then go on Facebook and see that Indy Okafor, the Nigerian-American, British, I don't know where she's from other than Nigeria, right? 
the Nigerian raised outside of Nigeria writer um, just got a uh, adaption deal for her series Binti and you know I've always joked and I still joke and I'll joke when I see her because it isn't far from reality that I call it Space Babar right I call her Binti series Space Babar why do I call it Space Babar. If you know anything about the tuxedo top hat wearing elephant children's book story Babar, he was taken out of his African village with other elephants and was raised in England and comes back civilized to his uh, uh, tribe in Africa. He's wearing a suit and a vest and a top hat, suit with tails, top hat and a cane and he comes back to civilize them and for me that was the reverse propaganda uh, rhetoric BS you know the European narrative suggesting that their civilization could uh, is capable of civilizing an African civilization and I'm like are you out of your mind you guys had the daggone black plague because y'all didn't know how to bathe how are you going to civilize an African tribe that has all of these things together? So for me, it was the ultimate propaganda. And I could go on about Babar's reverse stupidness, but you know, you can put it together yourself. All of that said, in uh, Indy Okafor's book, um, Binti, they find a group of space Africans that walk on the ground because they have a connection to the sentient earth, right? Or the sentient planet that they're on. I don't even remember if it's earth or not. And um, when they come in to fly the ships, they make the best navigators for whatever reason that I don't remember. But that's the gist of it, you know? And to me, by that setup, it's like some magic Negro stuff, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna build either we're gonna build the science and you know go in deep, like look even deeper than what James Cameron did with Avatar, where they learn it's a process that it takes ability, you know, skill training to um, perform. You know, that's just not some birthright. Oh my God, it's a little magic, little magic Negro in space that can fly our ships. You know what I'm saying? Um, that to me is, uh, I, can't, I, I guess, you know, I wanted to do a video on gatekeeper selected black sci-fi and independent black sci-fi because I do believe that the publishing gatekeepers not only select books based upon their marketability and their sale, sale potential, but they also select them based on uh, the hopes and the belief that they won't be offensive, that they'll fit within the acceptable narrative range. So that means you don't want to, you ain't going to get a publishing deal if you create a strong black planet because it's going to affect the um, white fragility of mainstream readers, which are white. Um, and for me, I argue that it's not racist to imagine human species in space being as black and brown as the human species on Earth. White European skin features make up 10% of the human diversity on the planet. Now, sure, the numbers are growing for the Asian community, but that's the base division, division, right? And so if you were to create a space uh, populated human species that was black and brown like Earth, it to me would be more accurate and would not be reverse racist. Whereas making a white dominated space is racist to me. So again, 
I don't know. I think there's a fear of the black planet for a number of reasons. Simple based down to why they fear black people in the first place. Maybe if they believe, if they see black space planets, they will be scared that black people will come to Earth and regulate Earth like they did in my favorite science fiction book, Zorro, A Tale of Alien Avengers. Anyway, that's Jeff. I'm finished expressing myself. I do think there's a fear of a black planet. Um, get ready for my series, Planet of Kibalon. It is what it is. Let's go. Thank you. Deuces. Like, subscribe, share, and now comment. Deuces.